Hey, what's up guys? So if you saw our video about how to combine channels from monochrome camera into a color image, you know that I um, told you guys I would be doing the same video but focused on bicolor imaging. So with the same camera, a monochrome camera, we are going to use only two channels, so two narrowband channels, and combine them into a bicolor image. So let's do it. Okay, so we're now going to combine two channels only, which is a bit tricky at first. But um, so before we start again, thank you to lightvortexastronomy.com for teaching me how to do this. Um, so I'm going to show you now how to how to combine those two. So we have two frames here, the uh, HA frame and the O3 frame. I don't really like the O3 because the stars look really bad. Anyway, so we want to combine those two into one color image, okay? So before we start, um, all I did was batch preprocessing. So I could combine those two, oh, I mean, I could combine each frame into their individual channel. So if you don't know how to do this, it's kind of different than, uh, than with the DSLR, for example. I forgot to show you guys last time, but um, you make sure it's not checked here, the CFA. And um, also make sure you don't just add lights. So you want to select custom instead. So for example, here you would select light frame and filter name, either HA or O3 or... You can name them however you want. Um, I usually just do H for HA, for example, and then you just add files, and you select your uh, your HA files. That's all I did. Um, this way, it will create two different files: one for the H, one for the O3, and if if more, then you can have more as well. Anyway, so we get this uh, once this is done. So the first three steps are going to be the same ones as last time for combining three channels, except we will not need channel combination. We will only need pixel math at the end. So we have two steps here, but before I always like, just in case, I like to crop uh, my images a bit, just slightly. I don't think it's necessary, but um, I do it anyway, just to feel safer. Just crop a tiny bit, just in case there is some, some black banding. But I think you don't have to do that. But anyway, I'm doing it, so just follow along. <laughs> So I slide it to the other one first, so it's the same, uh, same square, and then I select the, the first one again and press confirm. So now we have the same crop for sure on both images. And now I'm going to go ahead and, and take care of the uh, non-linear phase. So we want to... By the way, before this, you should probably do a, a um, atro square transform as well as a DBE before combining the channels. But for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna go straight to combining. So first step, same as last time, mass stretch. What you wanna do is make a, a small preview. So find a, an area of the sky that's completely dark, completely, I mean, the typical background. There's a bunch of gas on this on this uh, Pelican Nebula image. So it's really hard, but um, hopefully this one here is fine. And then just slide it to the other, the, other fr the other frame, so you have the same preview on both. And now, before you apply mass stretch, make sure you uh, get rid of the STF, and you can completely close that, by the way. And now, apply the, uh, the mass stretch with each reference, uh, for, to each with their own reference preview. So H to H and O to O. By the way, I think it looks really bad because, uh, you see how fuzzy it looks? That's because it was very, very humid at night. It was like 80% humidity. And I don't have a dew shield or dew heater, so it's oh, it looks so fuzzy, I hate it. But it's gonna have to do, I mean, I'm gonna try to salvage it anyway, but, um, ah, oh, so sad. Okay, so we now have both images in a non-linear form, so I can close mass stretch now, and I can read, I can get rid of the the previews so you can do the same if you want and now we only have one process before the last one which is linear fit now we're going to take the reference image uh, we're going to select HA and apply this to the O3 channel this will make sure that the the O3 is the same as the same background brightness as our main image which is the H, the H image I say main because it's the most uh, impressive one of all. Okay, so as you can see now, they, this one is a bit more 
bright in a way, so they cannot match. And now we can um, close this and make those images smaller because we don't really need them anymore, just on the side. And now we can combine them. So it's a bit trickier on this on this part compared to the to the basic three channel combination. So we're gonna use pixel math, which you can find by the way on uh, in the processes here. Wait, my cat. Okay. Okay. So what you want to do here, first of all, is I'm going to reset it so you can see uh, what it looks like when you open it. So first of all, make sure you uncheck this right here because we don't really do RGB uh, single. And then make sure you create a new image so it doesn't replace what we have right now. And lastly, I think it's color channel, yeah, RGB color. So it's in color and not in, in black and white. So now here is pretty much however you want it to be. You can do, you can play around with this. I'm gonna open the H one and you can play around. You're gonna use the three first ones and it's really simple. So my HA file is named H, right? No, it's not. <laughs> Let's make sure we do that. So H, so it's easy. And then my O file is named, well now it's named O. So if we do, let's say, R, R, putain, j'ai bien. <laughs> if we do, um, so we have R, G, and B, so red, green, and blue. Let's try H, A for red, um, O3 for green, and once again, since we only have two, we cannot put sulfur. Let's try O again for B. Let's see what it looks like. So it's kind of a game of guessing at first, because you don't really know what you want to do. And um, pretty much you're gonna play with this until you're satisfied. So right now we have a mostly red nebula with some greenish stars, which we can we can take care of the green later. So it's not too bad. So you can also do some actual math, which is like for example you can do like H times 0.4 and 60% uh, O3. So if you could try that for green, you're gonna get a different result that I can show you here. So see you can really. You can really do some actual math with pixel math, so so play around with that. And this one I really like. It's it's more orange. It's more it's kind of brownish, but the stars are, are a bit better, I think. So just play around with that. Try a few different combinations. Uh, let's try the other way around. Six and four. I don't want to spend too much time on this because you can just play with this for like two hours if you want to, until you you get what you want. But, um, yeah, let's try that just for fun. Oh, not too bad either. It's, it's brighter, I like it. And then one last time, let's let's be crazy and do uh, the same one, but let's do O and H so we can see what it looks like when it's the opposite. And uh, all you have to do next is pick whatever, whichever one you prefer the most and uh, process it. So, interesting. It's really strange, but interesting, but not for me. So let's pretend we like this one the most. Let's pretend. The next thing you would do is probably a background neutralization as well as a color calibration. And that's how you will get your actual real colors. So you probably know how to do this. So I'm not going to show you, but I'm um, just make a, a couple of previews. I shall just show you. So let's make a small preview here. And then the second one here. So for background, we're gonna do number one. Okay, apply. And that's how we're gonna get our real color, our final um, color uh, ready for processing. So this is the background neutralization. And then right away after, you should do a color calibration, which is gonna be the same thing. So white reference is gonna be the number two, which is a nebula. And the background reference is going to be the same one as earlier, which is number uh, preview number one. And there we go. So it's going to load. I actually like it a lot in yellow. It's interesting. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's really popular, but I like it. I might go ahead and do that. Let's see. Once this color calibrated, see now we have some some more blues in the background. So play around with that until you're satisfied and then just do your normal processing. 
So that's how you combine two channels into, into one bicolor image. So hopefully you can use that tutorial for, for, your, for your own images if you're doing bicolor sometime. And if you have any questions, just let us know in the comments or on our website. We'll have the written post as well. And um, I'm going to process this right now. And I'm going to show you here what the final image looks like. So this is the final image. So hopefully this is a nice image. I'm not sure. You guys tell me. Uh, I haven't seen it yet since uh, I still have to do it. But <laughs> hopefully by the time the video is out, um, it's going to be great. So yeah, see you guys later and class guys. Thank you.